Okay, today we're going to do a little video, kind of more naval history than firearms history. Um, I'm going to title it the Navy's First Assault Rifle, the Remington Lee Model 1885 Bolt Action Rifle. The reason I call it the Navy's First Assault Rifle is this rifle at that short period in time was probably the most advanced and modern uh, infantry rifle of the era. And the Navy adopted it, not in large numbers. I think they only ordered about 1,700, 1,700 of these. Um, so let's go and start with the post-Civil War era. At the end of the Civil War, cartridge guns uh, started replacing muzzle loaders. The United States government came up with the Springfield trapdoor. Okay. Now this was kind of, this came about, they had a bunch of muzzle loading muskets and material and parts, and the most cost effective way is to design a cartridge gun from modifying the parts on hand. And they came up with this design. This is a later design. The early ones were actually muskets with a mechanism attached in a 58 caliber. Later, um, they went and sleeved the bores, the musket bores, to a 50 caliber. And they made these trap doors in a 5070. This one here is a 4570. This is a model 1873. Um, the Navy did have. I think they probably used some of these trapdoors. You see pictures with sailors with trapdoors. But also at the same time, Remington Arms was coming out with a weapon, a single shot weapon of a different design. It's a lot more simpler than a trapdoor. Basically, you cock this hammer back, drop this down, and that's how you loaded the gun. It's pretty simple. And if you watch, when the hammer comes down, it engages this part and holds it in. So it's a pretty simple weapon, pretty basic weapon. And Remington, even though the Navy did have a version of this, and the Army did have a version of this, um, a majority of the guns manufactured like this one here, is an Argentine model, were for foreign military sales. But this was kind of the weapon of the day is this Remington gun um, for a lot of foreign countries. They had lots of sales in foreign countries. Now, in 1871, the Navy went on an expedition. They left Japan and went to Korea, searched for some uh, shipwrecked or lost sailors, opened up diplomatic relations. The Navy and the Marine Corps were at the time uh, America's representatives or our foreign diplomacy, they were the part of the military that dealt with that. They were attacked upon showing up in Korea. They uh, returned fire to the forts. There was a series of four forts. And a, uh, then once they uh, neutralized the forts, they landed basically with probably those Remington rolling blocks. And uh, I think 158 Marines and 350 sailors uh, engaged in a battle that lasted two days and captured these four forts. So the Navy decided that because they're going to these uh, far-flung places and would be engaging militaries, that they wanted the most technologically advanced rifles and small arms of the day. And that's where James Paris Lee, who was a Scotsman, come up with a design in 1879. Now, the first type of rifle, this is uh, model 1885, was a bit different. Uh, it had where the bolt handle was up into this section here, much like a lot of the European guns. And this is called a split breech action. How this works is when a bolt goes forward, where the gun locks up, like on a modern gun, it'll lock up in the front. It locks at one point back here on the breech. 
in one single point. Now, how this this was the standard of the day. I'll show you a French grass rifle. This is a single shot. Most European armies use a single shot bolt action rifle. And as you notice, the handle on this was here. The earlier version of this was quite similar. Same way. Locks up, locks up in one point. But there's a slight problem with this. When this weapon fires in a milliseconds for the bullet leaves the breech, all your recoil is concentrated on this one point in the receiver. And the gun flexes, which is called barrel whip. This is important because the second model addresses this problem. Also, there was a war where Turkey bought some 1866 Remington, uh, or not Remington, Winchester lever action rifles. That's a lever action rifle with usually a brass receiver, it had a tubular magazine. And it was basically a modification of the Henry rifle. Well, the troops armed with this repeating rifle uh, seriously defeated these other troops, I believe it was the Russians. So the first military to issue a magazine-fed repeating rifle were the Swiss. With this is basically uh, the 1869 Swiss Vetterli. And what this has is this has like a 10-shot magazine that loads much like a lever-action rifle through this gate. And if you notice the bolt, even though it's a bolt action, this resembles the bolt of a lever-action gun with the same action of the cartridge elevator. Basically this is a modification of the Winchester lever-action gun in a bolt-action form. This was the first military magazine-fed rifle issued uh, to any country, the model of 1869. So once everyone got into metallic cartridges, the next arms race was for a magazine repeater. So as we've seen, we were using single shot guns. So when Lee designed this gun, it has a five-shot magazine. Now what's different on this gun than that is most of the magazines were tube magazines, much like the Vetterli that went underneath. The Germans had a version, they had a version. This rifle has a detachable box magazine which holds five rounds. This was kind of something different. Sheet metal and uh, it holds a 4570 cartridge in there, five rounds. Now, what's also very interesting and innovative here, like I said, this is his second design. I think they changed the magazine around a bit. But if you look at it, when you open the gun, a lot of these guns had a little complicated lever and that for magazine cutoff. With this rifle, if you did not have a magazine in it, watch inside the receiver there. When you remove the magazine, the little sheet metal plate comes out. Now, without the magazine in, whether on purpose or you lose the magazine, you now, with that little adapter, have a single shot rifle. Single shot bolt action rifle. So the gun was designed to be used as a single shot without the magazine in it. Then there are pictures of the sailors wearing canvas belts where they'll have a belt with several of these magazines in it which meant rapid reloading. And as you see the metal plate retracts once the magazine is placed back into the rifle. So we have a bolt action rifle, detachable magazine, issued numerous magazines and you know you have a high rate of fire, much faster than the uh, single shot guns which you'd probably encounter. Now also like I said as we see we have the single lock up here. Now to make the gun more accurate and 
eliminate the barrel whip problem, I have a bolt here. Um, it's similar. As we see the bolt out of the gun locks up here, what he did on the model 1885 is he added a second lug. So now, instead of this just locking at one point, it locked at an equal point. They milled out a little notch inside the receiver. You can't see it. So when this gun locks up, it locks up at two points instead of the single one. Thus, when the gun recoils, the uh, force is evenly distributed into the receiver, eliminating that flexing, which probably would increase the accuracy. Now, also on these guns, they come in a white. They're unusual is Remington's markings are here. And here's the serial number that Remington placed on the rifle when it manufactured it. When the Navy would accept it, they would stamp USN, put another serial number, which was the Navy serial number, and HHE was the initials of the inspector that accepted this as a good weapon. Also on this rifle, which was added, is you have a safety, which is basically if you cock this, you would lower it down until you get into that click in there, or pull it back, and then this locked the gun. The gun won't fire, the bolt won't open. So it had this safety added, which the earlier models didn't have that. That's how you would disengage your safety to operate the weapon. The sights are very similar to those used on the trapdoor rifle. Almost the same as the 1879. They had a socket bayonet, which I don't have, which much like the trapdoor cleaning rod and that. So this was a highly advanced rifle, and like I said, not very many of them were taken in by the Navy, but it gave the U.S. Navy at the time, for a short period of time, probably within five to eight years after this gun was adopted, smokeless powder came and then the whole uh, scene changed again. We needed guns that were magazine fired and operated with the new smokeless powder. So this gun became obsolete pretty quick, even though it was very advanced, um, it didn't stick around long. By 1905, they were no longer in service and sold off as surplus. So you say, uh, well, that's an interesting gun. Why, you know, why didn't they work on it? There were models made with smokeless powder, uh, civilian models, but I think what it is is this gun was probably expensive to manufacture or for political reasons. But there were several foreign countries that bought this rifle, and England was one of them. They went to New Zealand, China, South America. And this gun actually, further development, like I said, this is the Remington Lee. There was another gun called the Lee Metford, and the British did buy some. And this gun later on went over the years by the British to be modified. And this is a number four Mark I British rifle. And it's basically the uh, development of this gun into the modern times, which these are still used to this day. You have your detachable box magazine. And it still has the same cock on the closing. The bolt's still similar. It's been modified over the years and is completely different. But this design lives on to even now, these are used in some far-flung uh, parts of the world. The design, you know, as it's been modified, is still in service today. So, that's an interesting gun. A little bit of naval history, a little bit of weapons history. Just a very, like I said, there's only about 1,500 of these made, so it's rare. And I will do a video later, maybe as a follow-up, where I shoot this and maybe shoot it head to head with the trapdoor to see uh, rate of fire test more or less, see which one's faster.